that better? Good stuff. <laughs> Little chipmunk booty in your face. I'll take it. It's a cutie booty. <laughs> so we're working on our chipmunks. Um, we are here. And in this video, we're going to work on the face. So if you're just joining us, you may want to back up a little and um, start at the beginning of the series. And this project is recommended for um, those of you who have already followed one of my tutorials with an armature um, and the little doing the little toes. So not a great beginner project, but at Sarah Cena, oh, I can't talk. At SerafinaFiberArt.com, you can go to the video page and see all of the tutorials and um, start at the beginning there. Ready to get started? Do you, uh, do you want to give us a fun chipmunk fact? Well, not yet, but one tip. Do not Google embryo jokes. <laughs> it's, it's bad. Just, it's wrong. Just, That's but not funny. That's a reference to a conversation last yes, video. Uh, okay. Yes, it was, okay. it's bad. That's, that's all I've got so okay. far. Okay, all right. We'll get started okay. then. So we're going to make some face shapes. And I pre-made some face shapes. These are sort of teardrop or pear-shaped little cheeks. You can make these big if your chipmunk has big nuts. <laughs> it's done well. There's a fact. You need to know this fact. Okay. I know you're just getting started, but it's a good one. All right. Chipmunks have small mouths, but their cheeks can expand to three times mm -hmm. the size of its head. That's, wow. that's, yeah. that's huge. That's huge. So you got to do big cheeks. And I once made a chipmunk, um, that whose jaw was wired and his cheeks were actual little pockets, so that was kind of fun. Um, but this time we're making regular old sculpted cheeks. Okay, cheeks, chin, little ghost shape, maybe about quarter of an inch wide. That's his little chin, little cheeks. And then this is a ghost shape, um, but it's flat and about a little larger than a quarter and then that's going to become this can you see that mm -hmm. his little muzzle and then we put the eyes on and then this um becomes this is like a pope hat or house shape it's pointy here and straight here and that becomes the nose, forehead, and eyebrows. So, let's get started. We're going to start with the chin. We're going to start with this. And that is, take some core roving. I usually just make their chins white. This is just the off-white. If you want it to be bright white, you can put a little piece of the brighter white over um, so this, I tried to pull about like a two inch piece of core roving and I'm going to take about half of that lengthwise. And then I just felt it up and down the center and I fold the, actually let's do it, let's do a um, taco. So put it vertically felt a horizontal line, fold it over, and then you kind of take these edges and roll them in and shoot for a rounded ghost-like top. So that's a little wide um, this way. So. I might take it in my hands and just roll it a little bit. That's a little too pointy, so I'm going to take my needles and poke it back to round it out. Okay, 
and we have a chin. Chin goes on right, kind of just bring it right in line with the end of the nose. And I just stab it to, um, to hold it for now. Don't get too detailed with it. I'm just getting it to stay on there. Then his little cheeks will go right here. So the cheeks this time I'm going to make on the skewer. Um, if you don't have a skewer, you can use a toothpick or uh, even just roll it on your felting surface. But take a um, take a three inch piece of core wool, the whole width, and then split it in half lengthwise, and then. Trying to find a place for my foot. Yeah, you are shaking the camera. <laughs> trying to put my foot on the camera stand. Okay, and then this is this is the kind of shape I want to go for. It's about an inch and a half, and it's a little wider at the bottom and pointer at the, pointier at the tip. So if I wrap if I wrap my skewer, now I've got a point here. So I'm going to take the bulk of the wool back and go around here, keeping most of it back here, and then just felt it. And you can even do them on the skewer at the same time so that you can make, see them and make sure you're making them the same. I think I want my cheeks a little bit bigger. Those are kind of wimpy little cheeks. I'm not going too, too tight with it because um, I want to be able to shape it once it's on the chipmunk. So I'm actually wrapping it quite loosely. Just taking a little more wool, putting it on there. That's better. Not felting too much either. And then to get a little bit of color on it, um, you could just leave it off white and do a little bit of color blending later, but I'm going to take some of this sandstone, this longer, lighter tan, like two, three inch pieces, and just wrap each one with a little bit of that. It's nice just to get the color on there so that everything blends once you put it on the face. Two cheeks. What is your needle gauge, just curious? Don't ask me that, Milo, because this is the super needle that we don't know. Oh, the super needle. Yeah. I thought it was uh, 36. Someone asked about the 36. Yeah, the 36 is good. This is probably like a 36. This is a needle that um, I've been using for a year or more, and I love it, and I'm trying to figure out what brand it is and where it came from so that I can get it. It looks giganto. I know. It's long. All right. To put the cheeks on, you just put them on the side. And let the tip just travel up towards the towards the front, towards the nose, and let the thick part be towards the back of the head. And again, I'm not doing too too much. I'm just getting them on. The way that I build faces, it kind of all comes together at the end, and then I really spend some time. <laughs> right? <in>. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's the way it looks right now, which isn't great, but it will be. Because next, we're going to make this shape, which will become his muzzle, and it'll pull it together. So, to make this shape, I'm going to take a nice two inch piece of 
the tan core and then put a little bit of sandstone over it. And that's two inches, but not counting the fringe. It's, it's yeah, if I were to cut it off where the fringe stops being fringy, it's two inches. There's my two inch mark. I'm not questioning you. Some people sometimes I wonder. No, it looks like more. I mean, it might be a little more. Healthy. Didn't I say? I said healthy, healthy two inches. <clears throat> like, I'm a healthy 130 pounds. <laughs> okay, I'm going to draw the shape I want. It's larger than a, a quarter because it needs to come all the way over here and all the way over here on each on each side. So it's quite a largish half circle. I fold the top edge back and then I just kind of fold in following my my lines. And on flat um, shapes I like to use the punch tool because it really just when you want something well felted that's flat this is your best tool. And then I'm going to pull some of this extra out. I wanted to have that wool there to make sure, you know, I was could get a big enough shape, but I don't need quite all of that. So it's a little tricky to pull this, put this on, and I might have to like lean in to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, you want the sides to just overlap the cheeks and it looks like a duck. Put it on so that it looks like a platypus. And then with your, you can just tack it into place. Just let those fringy sides meet, meet up with the cheeks. And then take a strong needle and really dent that front muzzle in. like that. And then I'm going to co continue to felt and shape it. Get the chin tucked in there. Always, they always go through this kind of disastrous <laughs> looking phase. So do you know how you say chipmunk in French? I don't. It's chipmunk. Oh. You know what I find interesting? I'm going to tell you. Is, <laughs> <laughs> since I have a captive audience, um, different what different languages say that animal sounds are. Like, like a dog in French says something different from what a dog. I can't remember any of them. This would be a more interesting conversation if I could remember <laughs> some of the foreign language animal sounds. Do you know how you say chipmunk in Italian? No. It is chipmunk. <laughs> Do they, is that because they don't have chipmunks? Uh, see, can uh, you see? It's starting to look like something. It's good. It looks yeah. like a chipmunk. You don't know if I'm saying it in French <laughs> or Italian. Oh, you, know, you speak French. <laughs> <laughs> and Polish and Icelandic and Albanian and Croatian and Danish is all chipmunk. So if someone asked me if I speak a foreign language, I could say I know one word. Chipmunk. Chipmunk. Okay. So we need to make little eyes. So I'm going to take a little bit of black. I tried to pull about an inch off. And then I split that in half. And then using the skewer again, I'm just going to wrap it around. And that just gives me this little seed shape. Milo, say something funny. I'm looking at my <laughs> notes. <laughs> How do you say chipmunk in Spanish? 
Chipmunk. No, it is not. I got you. It is Ardea. 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 It's the two L's. I can't say them right. Um, yeah, that's right. And German. German's my favorite. Okay. Well, I can't re read them my handwriting. <gasps> fucking, <gasps> fucking Harnchen. What? No. I cursed it. The good needle. I broke the magic needle. Well, at least we have it on film. I thought it felt a little weird. No, I, I, so to speak. <laughs> There's so many good felting puns. Okay, we're not going to dwell on it. We're busy. That's Plan a, B. That's that's sad, and you missed my bunkin bunkin harchin. Bunkin. I don't know. It's bunkin harchin. Oh, that's a good one. It is good. The eyes go over the cheeks in the middle of the head if you're looking at them from the side. And I just take in these little seed shapes and coming in at the edge so that you don't end up with an alien looking chipmunk. No, no it's not. You want to keep it round. So what gauge is your needle? So this is the 36. Not to rub it in. Well, this works like that. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. That was crazy. My muzzle needs to be felted back. Okay, and if you look at it from the top, you can see that your eyes are symmetrical. Now we need to make, this is the nose forehead piece, and it goes here like that. And this also needs to be a little wider than you think because it has to span the whole forehead and reach the eyes on each side. So this is your tan core, another good healthy two inch piece. I'm going to fan it out a little. And then I want to do a little bit of color variation on this. I'm going to put a little bit of light at the top, a little bit of the darker chestnut at the back, and a little bit of autumn gold to blend them, and then maybe even get oh, a little crazy, crazy, a little bit of gray towards the back. When you lay colors on top, thin but really consistent, you don't want holes. Um, there's one piece of glitter in here. One piece of sparkle. I got it. Um, and then I'm going to flip it over so that my pretty colors are on the bottom. I'm going to felt a vertical line and then I just rolled that very tip back a little bit. And now I really want to go paper airplane here and get a nice 45 degree taper to a point because that's the point of his nose and then at about one and a half inches wide I'm going to bring it in vertically there and there and that nice rolled edge is what gives you um, a good eyebrow whoops shape little head flat on the felting surface and I'm going to take the tip of this nose just beyond the tip of the muzzle and just make sure it's tacked on the top center and then I'm going to shape it around the eye with a stronger needle. I'm going to do a little bit more work on that, like sculpting on that. So I just want to show you the tack down real well.
Okay. So I'll blend here with maybe some, whatever color matches is going to pull that together. Just a really thin little tuft of it over that seam, hides the seam and blends the colors. But this is where once you have the pieces on, you just kind of need to do some, some sculpting and shaping. And I'll also probably take a little bit of black and just roll it in my fingers to make a little thin line and really delineate the shape of the mouth and the muzzle and the nose. Milo, what? Are you are you giving it a hug or a lick? Lots of hugs. <laughs> It's the humidity. Oh, it's, it's doing it to me oh, too. It's just terrible. It is. Okay, we're moving along with our chipmunks. We made some freaky faces <laughs> that need a little bit of tweaking. Um, but I'm going to move away from the face for now and do the pelt and the tail in this um, in this segment. Can, can you take him away from me? Yes. I, I can't handle the temptation. Come on, little guy. Oh, loosen up, Milo. Relax your grip. Let go. But okay. There. Uh, here. I'll move him over here. Okay. There. Okay. Do you want to tell me um, uh, what else you've learned from no. Google? Nothing. You know, Google should pay you. Yes. <laughs> uh, there are <laughs> lots of people who should pay me. I'm yeah. still waiting for, like, <laughs> milk bone or someone. <laughs> Milo is ready for the endorsements, people. <laughs> All right, any more fun facts? No. Okay, let's get to it. We're we're le we're done. We're leaving. Leaving. What? We, we are signing off and then starting again. Oh, I thought this was the beginning of the next video. <laughs> no.